Okay, I'm going to cover this week's movements in anticipation of next week on four charts, the four that interest me, US dollar yen, euro pound, euro US dollar, and cable. I think I'll go in that order. So starting with US dollar yen, the plan has been working well. Every dip is a buy in this, and I'm looking higher to complete wave D of the monthly triangle as shown. There will be D and E if this idea works out. Now we managed to fill, or not we, but it managed to fill the Sunday night gap here and reversed from that low. Everything is being bought. I do not at this stage anticipate a further down move. What I am looking for on the weekly, I'm looking at A is down here of the triangle. So I'm looking at a completion for D because everything's been in three waves here. 3 for B, 3 for C, W, X, Y, and I want to see 3 for D. So I'm looking for a move above the November high of 114.73 to top out somewhere in this region beneath this high and then to make a move down probably in January or February for E and it can be, if this idea works out, it can be to any level above here. So it could be a sharp move down and up because there is questionably a gap here still of about a point and a half. So it's not impossible that it spikes down and then moves up, or it could just be a type of sideways move too. No one will know, but if it does make it that far in advance, uh, that far in the future, it can be any type of move within the limits without breaking wave C. So next week I'm looking for higher in this. Any dip should be bought, I think, to above 114.70, what did I mention, 114.73. And uh, everything's in threes really, so how it's going to advance, it's not clear. I mean, it, you could do a one, two, one, two, and off count here, or it could just be a simple three-way move for here three wave correction and then we could see something like this five waves for the second part maybe I don't know how it's going to go but I'm looking for higher in this as an alternative I mentioned a couple alternatives in last weekend's video specifically about US dollar yen so see that I'm not going to go over that now I just want to say everything should be bought in this too with the caveat that there may still be a small gap here in September at 111 I think it's 110.83, but I don't remember exactly. One second. Yeah, it's about 110.83, because I think on my chart it failed to fill by about a point or two. So higher in this, Euro Pound has made some significant, well, I, actually I don't know if it's significant, but it's open to a significant change. Now, with a mate of mine, I've been running this idea that it's in a triangle and um, could be like this. Ignore the labeling because I altered it. Could also be like this for the triangle with wave E completing here or here. Either way, uh, we've been favoring the bearish view in this. The issue has now arisen from today's low that it may be altering into an expanded flat. The key in this has been the five wave decline from September through, sorry, from August through September and the initial three wave advance right here, which then morphed into a series of threes. Now, starting with the triangle idea, the invalidation point, in my opinion, is here. If we move above Thursday's high, I will probably give up on the triangle idea and look for the expanded flat idea, which I'll go over in a minute. The upward move from the low, I don't know how to count it on a lower time frame. Someone with more skill will maybe be able to do it but i cannot at this stage all i can say is that the invalidation point is about here 88.50 and um it's not far away from there and it's looking strong you can see the verticality the the sheer um speed of the move up it's not choppy at all not on this time frame anyway so going into next week um, actually, I'll come back to that. The alt scenario, the bearish one is there with the invalidation point and at this stage looking a bit less likely, but it's still valid right now. The alternative is a flat. 
expanded flat where we have A here for the first wave of the correction, a three wave move here for B, and now we would want to see typically a five wave move for C, so like that, preferably expanding into towards 91 or anywhere above A, preferably. And uh, that does suggest if it is correct as an expanded flat, there will be a following downward move. So that is what I will be looking for if it turns into an expanded flat. I, I don't favor the idea at this stage that this is just a three wave correction. And now we're looking for some move above 93 because in my opinion, price has already advanced five waves from, I think, July 2015. So you've got a five wave advance here, in my opinion. I think you're getting greedy if you're looking for some kind of um, fifth wave extension. We already had a third wave extension. I don't think it's really common or it's not typical to have two impulsive waves extend. One impulse extending is sufficient. So um, I think that it's going to be either the triangle still with the bearish view or an expanded flat. And the telltale sign, I think, on this, not only the invalidation point here for the triangle, but also if it is going to turn into a five-wave move for C, we would see a break of the invalidation point and some type of like bear flag of some manner, not that deep, okay? But uh, then to take off from there. So setting up, sorry, bull flag, there will be some type of flag, some type of sideways corrective pattern in three waves, which was set up for a big third wave move up next week if that works out so if we get the if it breaks here sets up a flag and then moves up that will be the telltale sign now there is local trend line a trend line break here so maybe that will serve as resistance i just have a hard time dealing with the count with a break of thursday's high so that is my sign and also subsequent price action if it's flaggy in a bullish sense so those are the two options on euro pound. The triangle, the bearish triangle has been working well, but as you can see with today's action, there is a big question mark over it that will need to be resolved in the opening days of next week. Euro US dollar, I am favoring this idea. Okay, first of all, I put the charts on Twitter. You can check there. Um, first of all, I'm favoring a down move on the weekly because of the stochastics trending down. In this type of situation, they usually resolve to the downside and finish the move by hitting 20 or below. I've covered that on a, many charts in the past, so I won't repeat it. It's looking like that now. Now, next week, I think it's the, um, the Fed rates decision. So there will be a move preceding that probably, and then one to follow, maybe in the opposite direction. And what I've been trying to work with... Um, here on the daily is the idea of an X wave. Now this here is just three waves, three waves up in my opinion. What I've been trying to work here is the idea of another move up to a new high, probably breaking this high and finding some kind of resistance here on the trend line, staying beneath the high from September and then resolving to the downside. Now, maybe that will happen, but so far locally, on the four hour it is not broken out now this down move has been choppy and uh, it's three waves overall and i've been looking for a break above trend if we break above here on monday i'll be looking for a buy setup to head back towards 119.50 and above and um, the idea is on that that it would fill the gap from sunday which is still open now and um ultimately turn around here and head back down towards 114 or so. Um, what I mentioned this week is there is still a price gap here on Euro US dollar from April. 108, there's a price gap there. So maybe the market will fill that in the future if the US dollar starts to rally. That comes in line with the 78.6 level. So we may, if this really is five waves here, it is possible we see a deep correction. It, it, it's, it could be something like A, B, and then five waves for C, and then revert to a bullish move after that. I can see that happening. 
it's certainly possible gap fills will probably be made at some point in the future so next week break above here on the four hour a move up um if it crumbles uh, I don't know, maybe it will, but this is looking choppy and the whole thing here is three waves. So I would prefer to see another move up. Cable. Well, I was bearish on Euro Pound, so I was expecting this to actually rally higher to break above last week's, pardon me, the September high. That didn't work out so far, but it's still holding there. It's not really a significant weekly candle. It's still kind of, um, it's still kind of a nothing candle. If this rallies, we will see euro pound fall. If this falls, we will most likely see euro pound rise for the expanded flat. So um, these have been going, I think, locally in opposite directions. And I really don't have much to say about this now. It's still holding near trend. Today's candle is not engulfing. So the decline was quite rapid. The up move worked yesterday, and uh, since then, not much has, well, it's basically come back to where it began. So I actually don't have anything else to say about this pair. The pound is very tetchy at the moment, and it's jerking about, really, to, um, to any news that comes out. And uh, it seems like, like the crux of the news has been sorted out now and that uh, there will not be any big surprises until I think February when the trade talks begin. So it looks like um, the main issues are resolved and things are settled and trade talks will begin next year. So I, I, I don't know what other type of news will really shake this up, but um, every little bit that's been coming out in the past 72 hours has sent this, I don't know, really sharply moving either direction. So next week, um, I talked about this last week, I do like the idea still of a move above here, but this is really, this is really open. This is really open right now. I mean, let me just go over the four hour for a moment. This, first of all, is not what I would consider an impulse. This looks corrective, and that's why I was bullish down here at the bottom. It, to me, it looks like three waves like this, basically. So I don't consider this really a the start of a down move to um, deal with this five wave move here. Like I talked about last weekend, this can go a number of ways. And then down. But uh, I also like the idea actually of, although it's forced, I like the idea of a three wave move with a truncation. And now another corrective move up. If we do see the high, well, there would need to be a, a break here and then a small correction and a chance to sell. Right now, there's no chance to sell. It's just been very jagged and whippy and um, really volatile. The other option I mentioned is a break above here. And I think if we do see a break above here, it will end up going down. Like with Euro US dollar, what I mentioned about possibly making a new high to fill the gap at least and then turning down. You see something similar on pound moving up a little bit higher, maybe taking out the high here of September, and I would still be bearish on that because there's a lot of divergence here. So even if we make that new high above 136 and change into 137, I'll still be looking for this to turn down. I think that's the best bet here. You can ignore this long weekly line. It still looks best as wave four of this move from 2014 finishing here the whole thing's choppy and the bullish bet on this would have to be a forced one two one two and it's not behaving like it's an impulsive third wave yet so uh, i would favor the downside i just don't think there's a setup yet as such i think a bunch of traders are looking at this as the impulsive decline and because we did not break that low here looking at this as a correction and as possible but uh let's see some type of break and set up and then a tanking to follow because that's not that's not happening yet so this is on the back burner but interesting the main pair is still us dollar yen being bought euro pound will get a resolution at the beginning of next week and then can take a further trade in it in either direction 
if it does turn up higher, there will be a should be should be a good setup for a wave two before really taking off up. But uh, let's see next week because so far the bearish case is still sound and can still happen. Okay, I'm not going to look at the dollar index right now. It kind of reflects euro US dollar too, so it probably has a bullish edge. And uh, euro franc, I'm not looking at now. Aussie US dollar has been bearish the whole way. Oh, there's one interesting pair actually. I like the look of this. This hasn't resolved yet. What I would say about this on the monthly, not taking LA wave into account, but uh, for the first time last month, price managed to barely but successfully close above the 55 monthly EMA, which has been a kind of reactive resistance point for a while, as before it was a bit supportish. And uh, I am looking for this to actually move higher next week if we can find a low. The 8 EMA on the monthly is at 109.0. And so far it's been declining choppily, and so far price is closing within last week's wick, which is always a good thing. We saw that this week on cable for anyone who uses candles. On Wednesday we saw the candle close within Tuesday's candle, and then the move down was reversed and Thursday went up. That's pretty common. Uh, price is closing within previous wicks on whichever time frame are important. So on Aussie New Zealand, I like the look of this to turn higher too because I think the decline from 24 October is choppy. It's looking like a three wave move so far. So maybe we'll get a bit more of a correction. But if we can find that move, that low, find that support, there should be a move back towards 113. I think there will be a good trade in here possibly next week. And I would like to take this. I don't have much to work with right now. It's still chopping down. So unless it really craps out. I think there will be a trade in this next week to turn around. Even if it moves down below 109, I think there's going to be a setup there next week and there should be some type of sign following. Some impulsive reversal and then setup or even some wedge or something ending. So that is a good one for next week. So euro pound, US dollar yen, which is the most interesting, I think. Aussie, New Zealand and Euro, US dollar, maybe cable following that. And I will leave it there. Okay, bye-bye.